Good afternoon, Frank. Hello, Professor uh, Porter. There's a lot of uh, fascinating things going on in the world, um, and uh, they, they seem to get more and more um, disturbing, actually. Train crashes, bus crashes, and so on, but uh, not many of them this past week have had uh, what I would call global significance, unless uh, entropy or disorder, increasing disorder is global significance. But one thing happened this past week which really caught my attention because it does seem to me to have um, uh, global significance which, is, which could finish up being earth-shattering and that is uh, the pronouncement of the Pope, the Pope Francis, our new Pope, who has uh, just had this, such a successful visit to Brazil right. and has really established a new sort of reputation for the papacy. Um, I think this was on his trip back on the plane, giving an interview, uh, when he uh, wasn't giving an official talk. Um, uh, he said, uh, when he was asked something about gay priests, he said, uh, what was it he said again? I keep forgetting the actual words. Uh, well, the, the question was actually uh, about, about, initially it was about the gay lobby, the so-called gay, yeah, lobby, the gay lobby within, yeah, yeah. within the Vatican. Yeah. And uh, he, he did make a, a direct comment about uh, the inappropriateness of, uh, of any lobbies within the Vatican and that he yeah. is, in fact, the Supreme Pontiff. Uh, and then, without prompting from the press, he then went on to talk about uh, gay priests. And uh, he ended up, uh, the quote I think you're searching for is, uh, who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? And this is so significant because uh, um, it involves something that comes in a, not just a theological package, but a cultural package that has been crucial to Western civilization since, since, since well, in, in words since St. Paul, but it's before that as well, and uh, has um, and it carries on something that started in Judaism and uh, was picked up in, and reinterpreted in a somewhat different way in Islam. And it's, it's absolutely central to the big organized religions in the world. And for the, for the supreme pontiff to say, who am I to judge? One wonders what's going to happen next. Well, th there's no doubt that... Uh it's excited a lot of people in the, uh, um, the, the I, I don't know, I forget what acronym they, they use, but there's a coalition of, uh, of lesbian and gay people um, yeah. that goes under a, a, a long acronym. But I mean, there's no doubt that it's excited them uh, quite a bit. Uh, the, the Pope did then, in response to a direct question, uh, rule out uh, any uh, women priests. Women priests, he, he yes. clear about that. But... Uh, you know, once once the package begins to unravel, that's just, <laughs> what, a slippery slope. Yeah. What is what? Uh, if you if you loose one end of the string, um, it, it, it's probably something else will get questioned to the point where something will have to be said about it, and uh, it's going to he's going to have to justify the idea of of not being able to judge, because if he can't judge, um, one wonders, um, what he, if he can't judge that, what can he judge? Well, you, you have to wonder what, what Benedict is thinking in his luxurious uh, <laughs> gardener's cottage in the, uh, in the, in the Vatican Garden. Ah. Um, he must be quite chagrined at what's happening. Ah. But your, it, your, your, your point's well taken. I mean, because the, 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 the reason the, it's so significant is that it's, it's, it's the core of the way society is organized. And if you, if, I mean, if, if you don't organize society in families, then um, uh, it's difficult to know what does organize society. And the church depends upon family organization. Uh, if if um, if priests can be gay, obviously anybody else can be gay. Presumably priests don't have any special privilege. And uh, there hasn't been any statement that I've seen yet from Muslims about what's happening to Christianity. I mean, that Muslim uh, 
uh, scholars are always talking about the, the decline of the West because mm -hmm. of um, um, the openness of um, uh, marital and sexual behavior in the West, but they haven't said anything about Christianity yet. But I'm sure they're going to start saying something because it's also a threat to them. Right. If uh, right. Christianity doesn't need this anymore, then uh, people, Muslims are going to say they don't need it anymore. Well, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a funny thing, all right? I mean, I was, I was driving to work today on August 1st, and uh, August 1st was the uh, first day that a number of states, as a result of legislative actions in state capitals, allowed for uh, same-sex marriage. And uh, there were at least three that, that came to mind, uh, Rhode Island, uh, Minnesota, and uh, there was another one. I forget which the third one was. And so this was the lead story on, I think, uh, actually on Bloomberg News, of all things, which means that it's the middle of the summer and there's not much news going on, I guess, in the business world. But it, it struck me that, uh, I mean, what the Pope is, is really doing, uh, if, you, if you subtract the theological implications from it, which is tough to do if you're the Pope, is that he's, he's simply just trying to, to keep pace with the world and the, the rate of change, et cetera, et cetera. And then, then it struck me as well, what an odd um, piece of purchase to, to grab onto to begin to make your, your pivot, so to speak, to begin to catch up. Because as you noted, where will this lead? Will it lead to a condoning of premarital sex? Will it lead to a condoning of Catholic couples living together uh, without being married? I mean, the list is pretty long here. Of well, things, uh, things same in the West. marriage is obviously going to be the next question. If you can be gay, can you marry? Correct. Uh, same sex. Correct. And uh, I'm surprised. I think people were taken so much by surprise that the, the reactions haven't started coming yet. Um, and I, uh, I mean, I even thought that I should start um, attending the Catholic Church at the end of the, my street again, just to find out what, what, whether people are talking about this or not. Well, I'm, su I'm sure there's no letter from the bishop yet. They're, they're still scrambling. I'm, I'm sure they're, they're <laughs> still trying to figure out what, what exactly was said, what it means. Is it going to be followed up by any sort of encyclical activity or any sort of lesser pronouncement, or was it just an off-the-comment remark? But the, as you note, even if it is an off-the-comment remark, but coming from him, it, it really has uh, an untold ripple effect. Because, I mean, there are, there are gay people who are politicians, there are gay doctors, there are gay teachers. I mean, you can go right down the list. So why shouldn't there be gay priests? You can look at it that way. And then if you look back at some of the platonic uh, foundational seeds of Christianity, if you want to you know, really get into that discussion, the way the Greeks viewed homosexuality was distinctly different than the way the, way the West has come to look at homosexuality. No, the, uh, what's, homosexuality obviously um, is uh, um, human, um, has always been part of human life, and uh, as far as we can tell, it's probably part of some animal life as well. We'd have, uh, to ask your, we'd have to ask your anthropological colleague about that, <laughs> about the, who did the study on I don't know whether his study of primate monogamy includes monogamous same-sex primates or we, not, we should, I have to should, ask you. Right. But uh, um, the, the point is that, um, that it's, been, it's not been allowed to be part of the way society is organized. Um, uh, as far as any of us know, um, since the very beginning, right up until uh, the second half of the 20, 20th century. And then gradually there's been this sense that the package is going to start unraveling. And then recently it's probably after 2000, was it, that it started unraveling seriously. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if, if that really does unravel, then the relationship between religion and society is going to be very different. And uh, if it now already there has there, there's a, a, a growing threat to the status of Islam in Islamic society um, in Cairo uh, because of all the the, um, the problems between the Muslim Brotherhood and the secular resistance uh, rebe re uh, re rebellion in in and the same sort of thing in in Tunisia. 
uh, and uh, that sort of thing is growing throughout the Muslim world. Now, uh, that means that there's going to be a lot of support for this sort of thing if if somebody start if somebody starts to push it, um, and it's that's what makes the uh, resistance so much more determined and fierce and and. Uh, um, uh, oh, it's much more dug in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I mean, I I have to say though that I I would think that for example with the. Uh, uh, with the change in the, one of the more conservative institutions in the in the world, i.e., the Roman Catholic Church, with their with their, and it's not a, even an official change as we've been discussing, but with their shift um, in views toward uh, gay priests, I mean, this is a real, real clear example of, of globalization on uh, on on the highest context in, in the most industrialized, uh, plugged-in, LinkedIn uh, society in the world in the in the West. Um, where this has happened so quickly. When, when I was a, a, a young boy, I mean, uh, even until probably until after college, being gay was was not good. No, it, was, no. it was kept very quiet. Mm -hmm. And now, just 25, 30 years later, I mean, look what we're talking about. All right, now, look, parallel it to the to Islam. All right, 35, 40 years ago, under under Nasser, even though he was a secularist. Right to be kind of uh, to making the the kinds of statements that the army is making now about crushing the the Muslim Brotherhood in order to almost eradicate a, an evil. I mean, you don't have to go back that far. All you have to do is go back five years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but and the the shift in behavior, the receptivity that's assumed to be there by these people making these these change decisions. I mean, it's because of the the shift in understanding. I think. Um, I, I also wonder, if, if I remember correctly, um, Italy is not as uh, progressive in these terms as um, the Anglo-Saxon countries are. I don't. I agree with you. Uh, so, in a way, the Pope is ahead of the country in which his office sits, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which well, you, is you, even you, more surprising. Right. I mean, you were just there a year or so ago. I mean, I, but I think you're right, though. I think it's it's still frowned upon. So, I mean, or certainly not accepted like it is, for example, in France or Britain or the U.S. So, it, it's fascinating. And uh, I, I was, uh, let me ask you a question. I mean, what did you think about the re reception he received in Brazil? Wasn't that amazing to see three million young people on the Copacabana beach in, in Rio? Um, I wonder whether the whole thing was his idea and what sort of advisors he had that, that uh, um, played a part in organizing the events of the trip. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, I mean, what's interesting about this from the point of view of what we try to do uh, in our weekly talks is that it, it's, it's important in, uh, for, the, for understanding globalization, not because it's it's something that's spreading all over the world, but because it's um, it, it's uh, um, it's something that is happening to society as society changes because the world is becoming one large community. And I think that a lot of what we focus on in globalization has to do with the increasing interconnectedness. And this isn't interconnectedness. This is the way society changes as the size of arenas of social interaction get larger and larger. And, and the change in society is, is what apparently uh, one would argue has, has affected the change in the Pope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, surely 30 or 40 years ago when, when he was a, uh, a diocesan Jesuit, or there are such things actually, when he was a regular Jesuit, non-ranking, I, I doubt he possessed these views. Yeah, uh, I wonder. You know, he's been saying he's uh, he's going to make a, a visit, a papal visit to Israel. Yes, I've read that. Uh, I wonder whether this will be <laughs> whether the Orthodox Jewry will have something to say about this. It's like now um, uh, Obama was going to go to Moscow, and now he's not sure whether he can go to Moscow or not. No, I think he's going to stick to St. Petersburg. 
<laughs> yeah, the, 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 the White House has already said that the summit is in jeopardy because uh, Snowden has been let to, uh, allowed to leave the airport. So, uh, well, I'll tell you, what, what, what's going on in Egypt is really amazing. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, uh, very disturbing. And then I noticed that uh, the president uh, has commissioned uh, two Republican senators, Lindsey Graham and John McCain, to go to Egypt to check it out. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but what, I, what about, what do you make of the visit of Catherine Ashton to our discussion with Morsi in a place that's not disclosed? We don't know where this took place. No, I, I don't think they blindfolded her, but, but they, they apparently, no, they, they, drove, they drove her around a little bit, uh, so she lost her bearings. Uh, they think he's in some uh, military installation uh, uh, out past the outskirts of Cairo. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, I think somebody needed to check up on him and see if he was all right and physically well, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I'm, I'm just amazed. What, what do you know about this Army uh, chief of staff who's uh, the alleged kingmaker here? I don't know anything about him personally, but it's interesting that the, the most efficient organizations in Egypt, Turkey, Israel, and probably some other countries, uh, for a long time have been the army. Right. Now, uh, Erdogan has managed to take the uh, guts out of the army leadership um, over the last 10 years. But uh, it's, it's interesting that, you know, the, you know uh, military organization has a particular history. Yes. And, uh, which is, I think, very interesting. It's, it's interesting that uh, um, uh, there's so many instances in the 21st century of military leadership being the, the most efficient organization. Uh, anyway, I, so well, we, I think um, we're way beyond our... And, and I've lost.